Hey, Algebra! Starting with our first flipped lesson. I know we did part of this in class, so if you need to fast forward, that's fine. But if you're absent, obviously, you can grab your notes. And here we go. We're going to start playing around with point-slope form again. We're not necessarily doing this. We're not going to be testing it individually on the different types of forms. We're just letting you know what each of the different forms are and go from there. So um, I'm going to skip the warm-up for now. So big question for today, can you graph an equation in point-slope form? Part of that, too, is um, I guess I would say can I identify what point slope form is. Now, you can always change everything into slope intercept form if you want to, need to, desire to. This will, however, there are some shortcuts with point slope form that hopefully you'll be able to see and know. So, point slope form basics look like this. I'm going to get my pretty pen out because you guys are worth it. And the setup is this. M is still your slope. Remember the fancy way of saying slope is the fancy way of saying rate of change, like we talked about at the beginning of this unit. And apparently, I made this of the line. I let that get too big. And then the point x sub 1, y sub 1, this is, so again, this is x sub 1. Oops. So this is how you pronounce it. The sub just means that you're going below. If you end up taking chemistry, you'll see that a lot um, for the elements. But it tells you a point on the line. And that's going to be kind of taking the place of our y-intercept. So from this form, you should be able to say, okay, well, we've got a point, we have a slope, and then from there, away we go. And again, as you guys are going through this, pause as you need to copy stuff down. I'm not going to wait for you guys because you guys have a pause button. So a couple things here. So for example, slope is the multiplier. That's 3. And in this case, my point would be 7, 7. That's not the world's best example, because what are you getting at? But again, the y value is going to be near the y. The x value is going to be ne near the x. So hopefully that'll be enough. Your slope here, negative 3 eighths. Your point here, again, remember, you have to change the sign. So that's going to be negative 9, negative 2. You're basically asking what makes these zeros? What makes... And then the last one, slope, negative 2. Oh, again, remember, we've been saying this. I can hear you guys shouting it right now. You could always write these as an improper fraction, which is a good thing to do so you don't mess up where things are going. Okay. So, again, points coming off of here. Slope is your multiplier. Points are one-time things. Slopes happen over and over and over again. All right, so on the next set, for example, two, I want you to go through, hit pause, and I would like you to go through and write down, use the examples that we just did, and come up with what those are, and then you can check your work. All right, time to check it. Cool, your slope, the multiplier, it's two, or you can write down two over one, your point here, the x is coming from the x value, so that's going to be 1, and then positive 5. This is again, negative 1 minus 1. For your slope for the second one, negative 2 thirds. Your point is going to be negative 4, negative 9. And your slope from the last one is negative 5. You could also write down negative 5 over 1. And your point is going to be negative 2, positive 5. Okay. Let's graph some of these. We've got a bunch to graph. Again, fast forward, stop as you need to go. I'll talk you through them. So first, again, the people who do this stuff right start identifying the parts right, down, right away. So like here, your point is going to be the 4, 2. Your slope is going to be 3 over 1. Again, remember that's dependent over independent, which is your y value over your x. Label out your axes. 
so you don't make any mistakes. So your point 0.42, I'm going to plot that first. So instead of plotting the y-intercept and going from there, we're going to start here. Okay, so plot your point, and then you're going to do your slope. So I'm going to go up 3 to the right 1, up 3 to the right 1. And there is your point. Now, if you end up working yourself backwards, you may actually hit the y-intercept. So in this case, actually, our y-intercept is negative 10. Um, so that's always... And actually, if you multiply this out, as we did the problems like this earlier, you would get y equals 3x minus 10. And then, you know, that would give you 10 of this. And double y, you can double check it. Example 2, again, find your point. Now, again, remember, you're changing the signs. So this would be a negative 1 to make that equal to 0. This would have to be a negative 4 to make that equal to 0. So that's your point. Your slope's the number out in front, the multiplier. Label your axes, because nobody wants to marry somebody who doesn't label their axes, because that's just wrong. So negative 1, negative 4, you plot the point. Slope is, so again, actually here, let's even label that. For sake, people think they know it, they get the coordinates reversed, and then from there, life just starts to fall apart. Don't be that person. Up 2 to the right 3. So again, up two, right three. Because again, remember, I'm going to actually write it like this. So again, it's your y over x. Change in y over change of x. So we're going the change in y. I'm going up two over three. And then again, draw your line. Yay! Use a straight edge. All the cool kids are. All right, hit pause. Try this one on your own. And then come back and hit pause, unpause, and check to see if you're doing it right. Of course, you labeled your axes because that's the type of students I've raised. Down th and again, remember, when we talked about this, always have the negative match up with the numerator. Um, because that way we're always going to the right. So I'm going to go down three to the right four. And if you weren't sure about that, remember, since it's a negative slope, and this is not a bad habit to get into, and obviously it's not something I should, I mean, it's something I should have done, is that, okay, I see a negative slope, I should know it's going downhill. Period. Done. So I've got that, and then we draw it out. So, boo, doo, 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 doo. so, interestingly enough, and this is sometimes you'll see this, the y-intercept actually isn't a nice number. And so sometimes that's why it's easier to do point slope form. If you actually try to change this into slope intercept form, you would actually get something rather nasty. All right, a couple more examples for your use. So again, what I'd like you to do is I would hit pause, do the problem, come back to it, and we'll walk through it. Welcome back. So the point that you have here should be um, 6, 9. Your slope is going to be 1 over 1. And again, remember, that's our y change and our x change. And I know somebody's going to come. Oh, that's not going to work well, is it? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, so it's the y change and the x change over the x change. And again, let's talk through options, y axis, x axis. You're going to plot the point 0.69. Um, the one thing I guess I haven't done, if you're assuming everything's one, I'm fine with you not necessarily breaking this down. It would be a good habit to get into it to at least mark them, some things off, and then indicate what that is. I wouldn't do necessarily have to do any more than this. This is okay. I'm going to go to 6 and then over to 9. Again, you should hopefully say, okay, hey, slope, it's positive. So you're going to go up like that, up 1 to the right 1. Now, again, remember, if you're going off your graph, you can always go backwards, too. So instead of just going up 1 into the right 1, we can also go down 1 into the left 1. So you can have points like that, and then you'd have a nice graph that looks like that. And so your y-intercept would actually be at 0, 3. Um, so there's that one. Try the next one.
Again, since this is positive, we know it should be going up if we're doing it right. Negative 3, negative 2. I'll mark this off just a tad. Oop, label your axes. You want to be a good catch. So negative 3, negative 2 can be here. I'm going to go up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. To the right, 4. We got a point there. Up 5. To the right, 4. Point there. And you get your nice line. We got one more. Well, that's awkward. Points at one, negative one. Because again, remember, we're pulling it off of here. So again, um, bum, bum, bum. just as a reminder, y minus y1. So what number am I subtracting over here for the y? And then your slope is going to be a negative 6 fifths. Again, the negative can go either place. It's best, in my opinion, from what I've seen, to put it on the top. So again, change of y over change of x. So we're going to go down 6, right 5. All right, your point. So I've got 2, 2, negative 2. <gasps> 1, negative 1. So then I'm going to go down 6. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then to the right five. One, two, three, four, five. Point. If I did it again, I would be off the screen. Again, personal recommendation, go at least three points to be safe. So down six, right five. I can go backwards. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. And then I can go up six. So you're doing a reverse. Two, do, do, do. Sorry, got too busy talking, and that, and then we have it there. And again, it's a negative slope, so it makes sense that I'm going down and to the right, and so you're going to end up with thump. Okay, I think that's our last practice example. It is. So, anyway, so those are some notes. When we get back to class tomorrow, we're going to go through and we're going to work through some of this stuff in some um, smaller groups, and we can that way I can double check things with you, um, and we'll go from there. All right. Um, again, pauses you need to on these, rewind, review them. If something isn't making sense, go through it again. Or make a note over on the side, and then we can cover it in class tomorrow. All right? Thanks. Look forward to seeing you. Talk to you later.